hopefully you can hear me. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and this setup looks a little different. Probably looks bad on camera, but I wanted to film this because today is the last time I will ever be in this studio. I started my YouTube channel here a few years ago. I was recording some videos in this lab, this video lab at my college, for a project that I was working on. I thought at the time I'd be filming three videos and taking a few pictures for Instagram, and it has quickly turned into a full-time, full-scale weekend hobby. I've really loved the opportunities I've had here on Just My Typewriter to work on all kinds of cool content and I've really been appreciative of having this space to work in on some of the videos. You can check out some of the videos I filmed in this room here below in the description box. That being said, sometimes these videos look well put together, kind of, and I sort of look like I know what I'm doing most of the time. However, as a collector and a content creator, there's so many times where I mess up. And I'm not just talking about a blooper reel, although I have tons of those you can watch. I mess up with video concepts all the time, and there's so many videos that you will never see just because I've half made them or I've started the process of working on them and abandoned them, got overwhelmed in the process. There's so many things that go into it, and there's some that have just ended up on the cutting room floor. So today I thought to say goodbye to this recording space and get ready for the new year, we'd go through a couple of those failed video attempts here in this video today. So today's the day where you are going to become a different color. So uh, that'll be interesting. So I have some supplies to get the bottom off. This is my typewriter tool bag tour. Obviously very well put together and scientific. So here she is, Jan. Sears Celebrity Power 12 1968 typewriter. I got her for free. She was just left in a closet in the building I work at. Nobody claimed her, so I just kind of took her. We've torn her apart in a couple of videos, uh, but today I think she needs a facelift. This is the case, and I think I just want to clean up the case a little bit too. Just scrub it down with some Lysol or some Simple Green just to clean it up a little bit. I think I am going to be selling Jan, the typewriter, and I want her to be all spiffy and new so that somebody is really interested in taking her home. She has this gray bottom to her, which is the original paint. I think it's pretty, but it's also not the most exciting color. She's kind of like two-tone gray. So I think if I paint it a different color, it might be more enticing. And this is also a metal bottom. So I think I can paint that with Rust-Oleum paint and it'll last just as long. I don't want to ruin her. I just want to increase her value and sometimes typewriters just need a little facelift for non-typewriter people to appreciate them. So this is the bottom and I can take this off by just getting rid of some of these screws. It's been a while since I've done this, but I know I can. I do need to cover up things like this made in the USA decal, the sticker on the bottom with all the information, and obviously the low to high. I don't want to get those messed up and I might have to paint around those separately. So here's the inside of the bottom. Obviously we can clean that up a little bit and set this guy up for some actual painting. So let's go try cleaning up some of this gross stuff. So I'm going to start with some brake cleaning fluid or just some PV brake cleaning fluid in general because it breaks down some things like rust and grime and gross stuff. But I do have to make sure I clean it all off properly after spraying. Now let's try drying it off with an air compressor. What is interesting is that on this back part, you can actually see where paint is chipping. Kind of like it was painted on too thick. And that'll show up in the spray paint job. So I'm trying to figure out how to approach that as well. Hmm. It's like a lot of work. Or we just paint over it. And no one has to see this clip. Oops. Oh no, you fell over. You're gonna be covered in simple green when this is over. 
There are some decals on here that I want to protect during the spray paint job, including some of these other paint things that I'm going to have to figure out how to fix later. But for now, I can spray paint around them to save them. So I do have some painter's tape, and I'm just going to cover those guys up. I'm having a bit of a crisis. Oh my goodness. Ugh. I'm having a bit of a crisis of conscience. Conscience? Because once you spray paint it, you can't go back. But I know I want to do this. I know it's the right thing for the typewriter, especially to sell it in my area. I just feel really bad about it. But only because I haven't done it yet and I'm just waiting for myself to mess it up. So let's give it a try. Not my best work. I think I'll have to do a second coat. You can see some of these spots just didn't cover over. I've got some dripping. Well, we'll give it a second coat. Let's let this one dry. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I hope I did this right. I think I need to stop touching it. I'm just going to make it worse. We'll let it dry for a little bit. There's just some spots here in the front where the paint won't stick and then I made it really drippy and I don't know how to fix that. Also, my hands look like I murdered someone. So I did two coats. Oops. <laughs> oh no. Ugh. Oh, I'm gonna have to fix that, huh? Crap. On both the outside and the inside. Clearly it got stuck to the cardboard so I'm gonna have to that up a little bit. <laughs> but I have to peel off the tape around some of the edges and then go in and spot correct, I think. The other thing I want to do is really clean up the case. As you can see, it's kind of dusty, just kind of dirty. Same on the inside. So I think I'm gonna take some cleaner and just kind of scrub it down a little bit, get some age off of it. I think we'll just let that dry for a couple minutes, then come back and maybe air it out with the air compressor. So this is after two coats and after I went around decals carefully, as carefully as I could. See, it's still there. Same with the sticker on the front, but big thing is you can see lines like this where I had tape or I have some drips just because that's spray paint. So I think what I'm going to do is try to sand down some of these textures and then do a cover up coat around that stuff. So it's day two of this adventure and I'm just so angry and done with it. It's not perfect. In fact, it's kind of awful. Um, but I've spent so much time on it and like trying to sand it down and fix what I did wrong in the first place and you just can't really fix it when you've messed up that bad. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut my losses and clear coat it and hope it doesn't look that bad but back together. So I've taken an air compressor to it and tried to blot all the gross peelies. So I'm going to simple green it down, put the ribbon back, and then attach the bottom. Well, Jan's back together in one piece, painted. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I might have to sleep on this one. So one thing I'm learning throughout this process is that I really need to work on my patience because I did not let things sit long enough before unfortunately letting them get all messed up by just existing in the air and being near objects. So I do think I need to go over and try and fix this again. One of my dad's favorite phrases is, that's the price of an education. I didn't do this right and I had to learn to be more patient while painting things and unfortunately that means I have to continue to still work on the same paint job that if I had done it right the first time maybe it wouldn't be taking me this long.
Um, so I was wondering if maybe you could just give me an overview of how you got started in collecting radios and why radios are the thing you collect specifically. I worked in radio um, here in Johnstown, originally in Erie, I guess, for a good segment of my life, 27 years altogether. And because of that, I just, I've always had an affinity. I've always loved radio. Uh, radio's not that old of a medium. You know, it's just about a hundred years old. So I can kind of say that I've worked in radio for a third of the time the, the whole industry has been in existence, you know. And very early on, I thought old radios were cool. I was always fascinated by the, uh, the old radio shows. You know, the idea that um, until we got out of World War II, all radio was live. So all the old, uh, you know, everything from Superman to Dick Tracy and, you know, detective shows and game shows and variety shows, all that stuff was live. And it was amazing to think that there was this box sitting on your, um, you know, table in the kitchen or in the dining room or whatever, and people would just turn the knob and they would hear live programming from New York or California or during the war, it might have been in, uh, you know, from Germany or from France or from England and things like that. And so that it was all live and that always fascinated me. So I, I can't tell you the first one I ever bought, but I'm, I'm sure it was probably at like a garage sale or, you know, someplace like that where I saw one and I said, oh, cool, look at this old radio. And I bought it and that just kind of started the trend. I, I just kept on buying them after that. I want to say, I think I have about 30 altogether. So that's not a lot, but I have three of the large style stand-up ones. Uh, and there's there's a couple of fun stories attached with, with those. And then the rest of them are almost all the tabletop variety uh, that, that you would have maybe during the war years and in the 50s and things like that. And I have a couple of the Cathedral Dome variety, like the one you see behind me. Uh, the, the Cathedral Dome uh, dates it automatically back to the 20s, probably maybe early 20s to the to the late 20s and the reason it's a cathedral dome is because it actually saves wood you you use less wood in a cathedral shape than you do in a square uh, shape and it was the Great Depression uh, in, in leading up to it in the 20s and so they they wanted to you know produce radios but they wanted to do it as cheap as they could so it was easier to take a straight piece of wood and just bend it you, you, you put it in water and then you can bend it and so they have, uh, they created a design called the Cathedral Dome or the Bentwood uh, design. And everybody was was using radios, you know, with that design for about a, a decade or so. So I have I have several of those and, and I kind of, I feel like I've kind of got a good representation of old radios, maybe up through maybe and including the 70s. And I'm old enough that when I look at something like in the 70s or 80s, that's not old to me. <laughs> you know, that's like, oh, that's not old. That's I, I had a radio like that, you know, that, that's not old at all. Um, so I, I don't think of anything older than that as being really an antique radio. But so for me, it's got to be eh, maybe the 60s, but pretty much the 50s or earlier. And then that's that's my definition of an, of an antique radio. Um, I was actually on the radio talking with one of my friends at the radio station and I mentioned I collect old radios and I said I, I have a bunch of desktop ones I don't have the big stand-up variety that's what I really want to get is the big stand-up variety ones the one that sat in the corner and they were like a part of your living room they were like an appliance you know they were so big uh, and they have these big huge speakers and you get such a, a wonderful rich bass sound out of them you know we don't have we don't have radios like that anymore i'd love to have one of those and a guy called me up and left a message and said if uh, hey you know i heard you saying how you'd like to have an old radio i got one and i live on i forget what it was but it was something like you know i live on apple street or something like that in such and such a town why don't you uh, if you want to stop by and pick it up it's yours you can have it and I thought, oh, that's really cool. And so I went to the street. I want to say it was like in South Fork or something like that. Could not find the guy anywhere. I, I couldn't, I don't think I could even find the street in that town. You know, I drove around, my wife and I drove around trying to find, looking at a map and trying to find this street and everything. We're like, I, you know, where is this guy? I can't find him anywhere. So we got back on the air on Monday and, and my friend I was talking to said, hey, how'd your uh, scavenger hunt go? Did you get your radio? And I said, no, I, I think, I don't think I know what town he's in. I, I got the name of the street. I got like the number and the, the street, but I, I don't know what town he is. And I went here 
and that wasn't the right town. And the guy was listening again, and he called me back, and he said, no, 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 I did. I'm not in South Fork. I'm in Somerset or something like that. You know, it was a whole different place. And I said, I said, okay, I'm going to write this down this time because whatever it was, the message that I got last time, I didn't, I didn't read it correctly. I didn't get it correctly. Um, so I went that day to, to um, get it, and I went out there, and it was, it was really fun talking to him. He was a fellow who um, had this old radio. I think it was like his grandmother's or something. It's been sitting around his house forever. He's trying to clean out his house and do some different things. He didn't want to get rid of it. He thought, boy, I wish I could find somebody who would really appreciate this. And then he heard me talking about it on the radio and he's, he's like, oh my gosh, you know, the guy I listened to on the radio, Rick would, would like to have this. So he ended up calling me. He showed me how on the bottom of it, about three or four inches up, there's a discoloration on the bottom of it. And that's actually from the 77 flood. So the, uh, the, the radio has actually a bit of Johnstown history to it as well that uh, her, her, his grandmother had lived in Johnstown and had experienced the flood. Fortunately, didn't, you know, like take the whole house away or anything, but it flooded the living room enough that it was, uh, uh, you know, caused a, a discoloration on it. So it's almost like a little piece of flood history in that particular one as well. And I told him I'd, I'd love to take it. And he said, it's yours. And we sat around for a while and talked about radio. He was a big fan. He loved the show we did. Uh, that's back on the radio station at that time it was called Key 95. Now it's called 96 Key. Um, but it was Key 95 and he listened all the time. He was a real fan. And, and sometimes when you meet fans, you, you always kind of hold your breath, <laughs> you know, because it's usually only the strange ones that you meet. Uh, the, the perfectly sane people don't bother calling you and talking to you or making any contact. It's kind of the, it's kind of the weird ones that want to talk to you. Um, so when I first thought I'm going to this guy's house, am I crazy, you know? Um, but he was a real nice fella and he loved the show and he loved the, the thought that he was giving something to me uh, that like was part of his life and, and he just wants it to have a good home. He didn't want to throw it out and didn't know what to do with it. And I offered to buy it from him and he said, no, no, it's, it's, you know, it's just a gift. So just go ahead and take it. So of all the ones that, that I've gotten from one uh, place or another, I have, I have a few other ones that, that friends picked up for me or my relatives picked up for me. But of all the ones I've gotten, that was kind of the one that that is the uh, the one I remember the most, the, the one that had the most fun of a journey uh, getting to me. All the rest are pretty much garage sales and uh, you know, good Goodwill or some different places like that. Somebody has a friend that has an old radio and they pass it along to me. Um, but that, that was the one that had the most fun story attached to it. So that's been a few videos that have gone unseen, unfinished didn't know what to do with them. I thought it was a fun way to say goodbye to the year and to this studio and move on to the next phase of Just My Typewriter. I want to thank you so much for the support you've given me here on this YouTube channel and on my Instagram, just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you so much for watching today, wish you a happy new year, and remind you, you're just my type. Writer.